start out with thoughts of goodwill, wishing for happiness, because that's the basic motive behind our practice. The Buddha realized there are a lot of things that can be done with the power of the mind. But the most important is overcoming the problem of suffering. Overcoming this problem that we create for ourselves. Because the basic two kinds of stress and suffering in life are the basic conditions of having a body, living in a world that's full of change. That's something we can't alter because the nature of the world is to keep on changing. But we can change the way we relate to that change. In other words, we can learn how to overcome the clinging, overcome the attachments, overcome the sense of identification that makes change such a burden for the mind. In other words, we take the principle of change and we turn it to our advantage. We learn how to change our habits, change our mind by training them. So as you're sitting here focusing on the breath, as the first step in the skill of training the mind in meditation, you know, the breath, of course, is changing. But you learn how to relate to it in a different way. You learn how to breathe more skillfully, relate to the breath in a more skillful way. Because the breath, after all, is the basic force that keeps, keeps the body going, keeps the body and the mind together. And it only stands to reason that if the breath energy is in good shape, then it's going to be good both for the health of the body and for the health of the mind. And yet we very rarely pay attention to it. We push it off into the background because we are the more important things we have to pay attention to. At least we think they're more important. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But when you meditate, you push those other things out of the way and you give space for the breath. So you can become more and more sensitive to what's going on as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Notice as you breathe in, where do you sense the process of the in-breath? Does it feel tense or tight? If it does, you can allow it to relax. And notice if you have a tendency to pull the breath in too long or push it out too long. Look to see the moment where the in-breath becomes uncomfortable or the out-breath becomes uncomfortable. Or it may be that the breathing is too short. Try expanding the breath, lengthening the breath, and see what that does. In other words, you make, your, make the breath your friend. You become friendly with the breath. Actually, the breath just sits there and does its own thing, but you learn to take a new attitude toward it. Give it time. Give it some attention in the same way that you would give time and attention to someone that you wanted to be friendly with. Give it some space to do its healing for the body. And you find as you do that it's easier and easier for the mind to settle down. You can focus on the breath at any part in the body. The classic places are the tip of the nose, the middle of the chest, the abdomen. But anywhere in the body where you sense now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And you can stay with that spot of the body in a way that feels natural to the mind, feels comfortable to the body. Watch the breath there. If you find yourself wandering off, just bring the mind right back. If you have trouble staying with the breath, you can use a meditation word, like in for the in-breath, out for the out-breath. Just think that thought in the mind. Other standard ones are butto, which means awake. Bhut with the in-breath, to with the out. It's a title that's given to the Buddha. It means awake. The quality we're trying to develop in the mind. Because as the mind settles into the present moment, it becomes more and more alert to what's going on. Because a lot of decisions are being made here in the present moment. When the Buddha talks about karma, this is what he's talking about, these choices that we're making, 
Some of them are conscious, some of them are unconscious. But they have an enormous impact on how we experience things. And so we want to be here in the present moment so we can get a better sense of exactly what choices are being made. Because it is our choices that shape our life, both in the present and on into the future. So we want to be careful that we're working with skillful motives, skillful intentions. And the best way to see that is to be very still in the present moment. The path begins at the point where we are able to look at our thoughts not as our thoughts, but simply as thoughts that come into the mind. And you look them at them in a, as part of a causal process. When you think in a particular way, what happens as a result? Because there are skillful thoughts and unskillful thoughts. The skillful ones are the ones that have no greed, anger, and delusion motivating them. You can see this, that they don't cause any harm to anybody. The ones that have greed, the ones that come from anger, the ones that come from delusion, those are horrible, both to yourself and the people around you. This is why meditation is a gift not only to yourself, but also to the people around you as well, because the more you can see through your greed, anger, and delusion and learn not to identify with them, not to act on them, the less you're inflicting other people with those qualities as well. Your own mind becomes lighter. Your actions place less of a burden on other people, because you become more and more responsible for the things where you really can be responsible. We get worked up about so many things in the outside world that we really can't change. And as a result, it wastes our energy. When it comes to being responsible about the area that we can change, the way we relate to the physical sensations, feelings, mental labels, thought constructs, our awareness of various things. Because these are the actions that pile suffering on top of just the basic stress of having a body, having a mind. These are the ones that cause the suffering that really go deep into the heart. Because that was one of the Buddha's major discoveries, is that once you stop creating unnecessary suffering for yourself, the basic stress of change in the world outside just does not weigh on the heart at all. It's because we bring it in that we suffer. Because we latch on to things, bring them into the mind. Say, this is me, this is mine. I want this to be this way, I want that to be that way, and get really attached to those ideas. That's, that's when we suffer. If we stop doing that, we can relate with the world, function in the world, but we don't have to suffer. The change in the world doesn't reach into the mind. So the heart of our difficulties in life lie right here. That we're not clear about why we're acting. We're not clear about what we're doing, what cause and effect are, as they operate in the mind. The Buddha compared himself to a doctor and the Dharma to, a, to medicine. The Dharma is meant to be practiced. In fact, one of the meanings of the word Dharma, one of the lesser known meanings of the word Dharma, is action. Since we take more responsibility for our actions, we become more skillful in our actions. Two words that my teacher used over and over again in teaching meditation is one, be observant, and two, use your ingenuity. If you have habitual ways of acting that are causing suffering, try to imagine other ways of acting. Many times we cause a lot of suffering for ourselves and others from a lack of imagination. And not imagination, just sort of spinning off into worlds unrelated to the reality, but having imagining other ways of approaching things, other ways of responding to things. Meditation is an experimental process. You find new ways of relating to the breath, new ways of conceiving this process of breathing that goes on in the body. Because you get more and more absorbed in the breath, you realize that it's a whole body process. The entire nervous system is involved. And 
these new ways of relating, these new ways of conceiving things, open up new possibilities in how you respond to the present, what choices you make. And you find more and more that you're, you approach the present moment with a lot more skill. So give some space for the breath. Give some space, space for this awareness of the breath and the body. And you find that it opens you up to more possibilities than you might have imagined. Learning how to use this power we have. We have a mind, and it's got a lot of power if it's properly tamed. It's like the light of the sun. If it's not focused, it just warms up things. But if you take a magnifying glass and focus it on one spot, you can, you can set fire to a piece of paper. It's the same with the mind. Or the energy of the mind is often too scattered to really accomplish anything much, but when you learn how to focus it and make it steady, it can burn out a lot of the ignorance that makes us unskillful, a lot of the ignorance that makes us suffer. So make the best use of this hour to get acquainted inside. <laughs>